Donald Trump is a big fan of Boris Johnson. And when you look into it, it makes sense, right? They were both born in New York City. Both of them had famous cheating scandals. Uh, They have similar political beliefs. And look at them. (laughs) I mean, look at them. They look like they were separated at birth. (laughs) And I mean purposely, like, separated (laughs) at birth. Like, the nurse was like, these two humans should not be in the same place at the same time. Send one to England, send one to the US, and pray they never meet. (laughs) Another thing that makes them similar is that for years, no one took either of them seriously. And now, just like Trump, Boris is poised to become the leader of his country which used to be a cool job, but thanks to Brexit is about as desirable as being Kanye West's social media manager, you know? (laughs) It's just like, what? He said, what? No, delete, delete. Jesus was not wearing Yeezys on the cross. No! (laughs) But who is the man? Many have dubbed the Donald Trump of the UK. Well, we thought, why don't get to know him in another installment of If You Don't Know, Now You Know. Meet Boris Johnson, British politician and stunt double for Jeff Daniels in Dumb and Dumber. (laughs) Now, many of you might be hearing about him for the first time, but in Britain, he's a household name. Alexander Boris de Pfeffel Johnson is the only British politician known universally by a first name. Boris. He began his career as a journalist. Johnson spent eight years as mayor of London, always willing to perform for the cameras. Johnson struck political gold when Britain hosted the 2012 Olympics. He gained praise for steering London smoothly through the event. There were a few embarrassing moments for Johnson, most notably when he got stuck on a zip wire. Oh, man, that is so embarrassing. (laughs) Stuck on a zip line up there. I guess at the same time, though, it's probably good preparation for handling Brexit, you know? It's just a, oh, boy, how do I get out of this? Any ideas? Any ideas? I thought it would be much easier. So Boris was the mayor of London and a character who did things that made people laugh. But just like Trump, he also gained a reputation for his trash talk. Boris Johnson has refused to bow to calls from all sides to apologize for saying women who wear face veils look like bank robbers and letterboxes. Johnson also blasted the president's decision to move a bust of Winston Churchill from the Oval Office. He called it, quote, a symbol of the part Kenyan president's ancestral dislike of the British Empire. He described Hillary Clinton as having, quote, dyed blonde hair, pouty lips, and a steely blue stare, like a sadistic nurse in a mental hospital. This on President Putin. Despite looking a bit like Dobby the house elf, he is a ruthless and manipulative tyrant. Okay. I honestly can't believe he said those things about Muslim women and Hillary Clinton, but... You do have to admit, (laughs) Vladimir Putin does look like Dobby. (laughs) I mean, he does. You know, it looks like Dobby got a job at KPMG. Like, look at him. (laughs) But still, but still, it's pretty ballsy for Boris to make fun of someone for looking like a Harry Potter character when he looks like a midlife crisis Malfoy. I mean... (laughs) Like, he looks like Malfoy got addicted to potions and he's been trying to sustain his habit ever since. (laughs) And despite his controversial quotes, Boris has continued to rise in British politics. In fact, after serving as London's mayor, he joined parliament and became a prominent voice for one of the biggest blunders in British political history, Brexit. The Leave campaign, which says Europe costs too much and controls too much, has been led by former London Mayor Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson believes he owns the victory. Vote Leave, my friends. Vote Leave. I believe that this Thursday can be our country's Independence Day. When you look at the EU now, it makes me think of some some badly designed undergarment. That is, that has now become too tight in some places, <laughs> far too tight, far too constrictive, and dangerously loose in, in other places. What? Forget Brexit. What's going on with this dude's underwear, man? <laughs> like, did he forget to take off that zipline harness? Is that what happened there? 
It's almost like he was so distracted by his uncomfortable underwear that it just like snuck into his speech. He's like, my friends, Britain is like a, a wedgie being pulled deeper and deeper into the butt crack of the European Union. And, uh, you know, squeezing with the testicles tight against my body, which was enjoyable at first, but has become extremely, extremely uncomfortable ever since. Now, if you excuse me, I'm headed to the bathroom to save the testes that I have remaining. Now, here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. Before the Brexit vote, Boris lied to voters in Britain about the benefits of leaving the EU. And now that Theresa May has taken most of the Brexit backlash, he might get her job. But he's part of the reason that she's losing it. Huh? And you thought the patriarchy was dying, baby. Huh? <laughs> we need to throw a patriarchy parade. I'll see you guys in Boston. Yeah! <laughs> so, that is Boris Kefuffle Johnson. The man who might soon be at the helm of Great Britain. And I don't know if he'd be a good prime minister or not, but I do know is that he definitely deserves his own sitcom. And that's why we made it. Brilliant. Boris Johnson, British Prime Minister and man who looks like he's just been in a pillow fight, announced that Britain's lockdowns will continue until at least June. And then he went on to lay out a possible plan for slowly reopening. Now, that it went okay. But then Boris also created a lot of confusion when he changed the country's coronavirus slogan from stay home to stay alert, which nobody really understands. Like, think about it. Stay at home makes sense. We all know what stay at home is. You stay at home. Stay alert. What does that mean? It's too general. Stay alert is something you say when you're boarding an alien spaceship or when you're searching for a parking spot. It's too broad. So, I understand why British people are confused. In fact, they haven't been this confused since they tasted seasoned food for the first time. Good Lord, what are these strange sensations in my mouth? When the COVID pandemic first swept the world in 2020, the UK was one of the countries that were hardest hit, and it responded with a national lockdown. All non-essential stores were closed, uh, public and private gatherings were banned, and Meghan and Harry were forced to socially distance 7,000 miles away. But now, we're learning that some of the people who imposed the lockdown weren't obeying it themselves. Boris Johnson is facing fierce criticism this morning. A leaked video shows senior Downing Street staff joking about a Christmas party thrown by the British Prime Minister during last year's Tier 3 COVID lockdown. This video shows aides rehearsing for a briefing four days after the alleged party. I've Ed. just seen reports on Twitter that there was a Downing Street Christmas party on Friday night. Do you recognize those reports? <laughs> I went home. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Um, uh... uh What's the answer? I don't know. I didn't want the party. party. It was cheese and wine. Just be clear, it's not on. <laughs> is cheese and wine all right? No. It was a business no. meeting. <laughs> I'm joking. This is recorded. It's a fictional party. It was a business meeting. <laughs> and it was not socially distanced. <laughs> the insensitive remarks were recorded just days after an alleged Christmas celebration at 10 Downing Street a year ago, a time when COVID restrictions in the country banned such gatherings, and while Britain was battling with overflowing hospitals and rising COVID deaths. In Parliament, the Prime Minister addressed the scandal. I was also furious to see that clip. I have been repeatedly assured since these allegations emerged, that there was no party and that, and that no COVID rules were broken. And that is what I have been repeatedly assured. We saw them practicing the lie and now you're gonna tell us that we must believe the lie? There was no party. You guys have to believe the thing that we saw is a thing, is not a thing, it is a thing. Everybody must believe me. You know, Boris, Boris would be a lot more believable if it didn't look like someone just pulled him out of a mosh pit. And guys, it's not, it's not just Boris, by the way. It feels like every month we catch another politician breaking their own COVID rules. Gavin Newsom went to that fancy restaurant. The mayor of Austin flew to Cabo. 
Andrew Cuomo kissed that bat. At the same time, I get why they broke COVID rules to have that party. I mean, people look forward all year long to the office Christmas party. It's the only chance you have to hook up with a coworker, have everyone in the office see it, and then pretend like it never happened. It's like a whole pass from HR. But the worst part is how they're on video joking about it. I mean, it's one thing to break your own rules. It's another thing to laugh about it. It's yet another thing to videotape it. It's like they're trying to win the dumbass triathlon. If they manage a scandal that badly, how did they handle the pandemic? What? Even worse? Total disaster. Oh, that makes sense. You may remember the outrage across Britain a couple of months ago when Boris Johnson was accused of throwing a secret party in the middle of lockdown against his own COVID rules, by the way. But the truth is there wasn't a secret COVID party. Turns out there were many secret COVID parties. And now Boris may have partied himself right out of a job. And the walls seem to be closing in on Boris Johnson. A new poll, in fact, for the Observer newspaper shows 63%, nearly two of every three Britons want Johnson out. As many as 20 conservative members of parliament say they plan to submit letters of no confidence. 54 letters are required to trigger a no confidence vote in parliament. Prime Minister Johnson has faced calls to resign after reports that number 10 Downing Street hosted parties over the past two years. The events were held when the United Kingdom government imposed strict COVID restrictions on gathering. I recognize the enormous sacrifice that people have made. Uh, I apologize for misjudgments that uh, may be made in number 10 by me uh, and anybody else. Uh, but please, can I ask him to wait uh, for the inquiry to conclude? One misjudgment that really hurts the apology to Her Majesty the Queen over parties allegedly held in Downing Street the night before Her Majesty sat alone at the funeral of her husband. You know, this sucks for Queen Elizabeth. I haven't seen her that disappointed since she found out what Prince Andrew did on his vacations. Apparently, these are not the only photos, Andrew. And I can hardly blame her, you know? I mean, her husband had just died and here they were throwing parties without her. I mean, come on, this is her first chance in 70 years to catch some fresh dick and no invites? Yo, that shit is messed up. Oh, you don't think people move on? You need to grow up. But you can see why so many people have turned on Boris over his scandal, because while he was having parties, the people of Britain were dealing with severe lockdowns. And I'm not talking about American lockdowns. I'm talking about real lockdowns. Like there were curfews, the government limited how many people you could see. People weren't even allowed to have anyone over for Christmas. Yeah, if Santa came down your chimney, you'd have to shoot him dead. But they don't have guns in the UK, so you just have to beat him to death. And look, I know Boris isn't the only political leader who's been caught parting against his own rules, but he might be the only one trying to pretend that he doesn't know what a party is. Prime Minister Johnson maintains he believed it to be an official work event, not a party. Now an email leak showing 100 people were invited to socially distanced drinks in Downing Street and to even bring their own booze. The idea that you walked into the garden, there's 40 people there, the tables are laid out with food and drink and there's alcohol yeah. being served in the middle of a lockdown and you think that's a work event, that is just ludicrous, isn't it? You are just taking the mickey out of the British people by no, suggesting I, well, that. I, I, nobody told me and nobody, nobody said that uh, this was something that was against the rules, that was a breach of the, of the COVID rules, that we were doing something that wasn't a, a work event. Yeah, no, nobody told me. I, I didn't know it was a party. I, how do you know what a party is unless somebody says it's a party? How could you not know? that that was a party. I mean, it's not a work event. They said, bring your own booze. That never happens for a regular work meeting. No one's ever like, we really need to figure out our fourth quarter projections. So grab some tequila, because daddy's making margaritas. And also, am, am I the only person who finds it weird that the leader of the government is the one saying, nobody told me that this was against the rules. Nobody told me. Nobody told you. They're your rules. Your rules to deal with a global pandemic. This isn't your kid's birthdays. You got to remember this shit. Now, Boris's own former top aide says that he did warn Boris that the party broke COVID rules and that Boris has been lying under oath to parliament about it. But maybe these parties are just emblematic 
of how Boris thinks COVID rules didn't apply to him. Like apparently, back when Boris had COVID, he refused to stay in isolation and it got so bad that his staff, and this is completely true, had to put chairs in the doorway to his office to block him from leaving. Yeah. Honestly, I was shocked when I read this. Mostly because I didn't know it was that easy to stop British people from going places. Turns out if Africa just put a couple of chairs in front of England, we could have stopped colonialism. (laughs) So as of now, Boris is in big trouble, or as they say in England, trouble. And really, if you're a prime minister who's been breaking the lockdown rules that you imposed on everybody else, you have to resign. Or you can do this. New this morning, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced the end of all pandemic restrictions in the United Kingdom, saying that people will no longer be asked to work from home, masks no longer required in schools, the mandate to wear masks in public removed as well. According to The Guardian, the swift change is seen as an attempt by Johnson to quell conservative anger over his lockdown breaching parties at Downing Street. And having looked at the data carefully, the cabinet concluded that once regulations lapse, the government will no longer mandate the wearing of face masks anywhere. Oh, shit. Boris went from BYOB to DGAF. You can't break the rules if there are no rules. That's right, everybody, no masks. Everybody, no restrictions and no more haircuts, bitches. And yeah, you could argue that suddenly lifting restrictions is just a cheap and dangerous attempt to curry public favor at the cost of spreading a lethal virus. But on the other hand, restrictions are lifted, baby. So break out the liquor, Britain. It's time for a work event. Great Britain. Their Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been embroiled in scandal ever since it was discovered that while Britons were in lockdown, he broke the rules and threw a bunch of office parties. And apparently they were partying for everything. Retirement parties, birthday parties, regular hangout parties. Shit, they were throwing parties just because someone figured out how to unjam the printer. It's working, it's really working. Well, this calls for a spot of bubbly. Greg, 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 Greg. And as if that wasn't bad enough, now Boris has another scandal brewing. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, get this, is once again on the defense. Over another issue, this time it's whether he authorized the evacuation of cats and dogs from Afghanistan. A batch of leaked emails appear to contradict Johnson's claims of having nothing to do with the evacuation of animals from a British charity in Afghanistan as the country fell to the Taliban and human beings were scrambling to find a way out of that country. The Prime Minister has always denied intervening, a denial he repeated this lunchtime. This whole thing is, is, is total rhubarb. The military always prioritised uh, human uh, beings, and that was quite right. And I think we should be incredibly proud of, uh, of what Pitty and what it achieved. Yo, can I be honest? This is the most white people scandal of all time. You rescued pets before human beings? Guys, you have to prioritise saving people over animals because people will be grateful about it. You rescue a cat from Afghanistan, it'll act like it's doing you a favor. Meow, thanks. Now, Boris says that this whole scandal is total rhubarb. So you can tell he's stressed because British people only bust out the obscure vegetables when their backs are against the wall. Prince Andrew, what were you doing on Jeffrey Epstein's island? Oh, Brussels sprouts, it's not what you think. This is where you realize how special Trump was at getting out of a jam, right? Remember that guy? Because where most politicians try and undo the scandal, Trump was a genius, man. He would just add another one to throw us off the trail. I know you're upset, but why are we talking about me sleeping with a porn star when I'm about to overthrow the government, huh? That's the real story, folks. Throwing over my own government and I'm gonna overthrow it with me inside it. Now I'm upside down. The British Prime Minister and guy who starts every morning sticking a fork in an electrical outlet has been in quite a spot of bother lately, which means it's time for another installment of Keep Calm and Party On. (laughs) 
British Prime Minister Boris Johnson just apologized to Parliament after a damning independent report was released this morning, which condemns, quote, failures of leadership and judgment by Johnson's office over those parties at 10 Downing Street held during COVID lockdowns. The government being scolded like children. The report says there were serious failures to observe the high standards. It says that excessive alcohol shouldn't be drunk at the workplace. It repeatedly describes a culture of drinking and partying. Boris Johnson was back in Parliament to try to justify the unjustifiable. Mr. Speaker, I get it and I will fix it. And I want to say... And I want to say to the people of this country, I know what the issue is. Yes, Mr. Speaker, yes, yes. It's whether this government can be trusted to deliver. And I say, Mr. Speaker, yes, we can be trusted. Yes, we can be trusted to deliver. Love how he's like, I identify the problem. I know what the, yeah, you made the problem. Of course you know what the problem is. But I, guys, I've solved it because I did it. But yes, according to this investigation, Boris Johnson's office had a culture of drinking and partying throughout the pandemic. And I'll be honest, I'd be more convinced that Boris could fix it if he didn't always look like an upside down guy doing a keg stand. I've got to say my, my, my favorite part about this whole scandal is actually how high school it is to get caught having a party. I mean, think about it. that's the level of scandal. Other world leaders are staging coups and invading other countries. Meanwhile, Boris is filling vodka bottles up with water like, hurry, hurry, the queen will be home soon. <laughs> Back in 2019, Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his conservative party, they won a landslide election victory. It was huge. They won everywhere, in Southern England, in Manchester, in Sherlock upon Watson, and East Narnia, all the places. Basically, between Boris and Ed Sheeran, 2019 was a good year. <laughs> especially for British people who look like they're from the year 1326. It was a good time. (laughs) And it was such a commanding victory that people thought Boris Johnson might become the prime minister who was up there for a decade, you know, which would be amazing for Britain's first human broom. But then (laughs) Boris started getting caught up in scandals, right? He botched the COVID response. Then he got caught throwing a bunch of parties while the rest of Britain had to be in lockdown. And then he hired people who he knew were alleged sex offenders. And of course, there was that time when he showed up to parliament wearing a t-shirt that said, the carpet matches the drapes, which was totally inappropriate (laughs) because it doesn't. He combs the carpets. So (laughs) finally, last month, he was forced to resign in disgrace. And yesterday he gave the greatest farewell speech of all time. Boris Johnson facing Parliament for one last time as British Prime Minister as only he would. Johnson defended his record in his farewell remarks. He also gave some words of advice to his successor. Number one, stay close to the Americans, stick up for the Ukrainians, stick up for freedom and democracy everywhere. Cut taxes and deregulate wherever you can to make this the greatest place to live and invest, which it is. Focus on the road ahead. Focus on the road ahead, but always remember to check the rear view mirror. And remember, remember a bubble. It's not Twitter that counts. It's the people that sent us here. Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to thank everybody here and hasta la vista, baby. Thank you. (laughs) Hasta la vista, baby. This is the land of Shakespeare (laughs) and Jane Austen. And the quote Boris chose was from the Terminator? (laughs) I mean, I guess that shows you the power of American culture. Even the prime minister of the United Kingdom is like, farewell and Godspeed. (laughs) The most ridiculous thing ever. I don't know if you saw, like, the speech was weird, the whole thing. In the middle, it looked like he just started giving random advice about driving. Focus on the road ahead. Uh, Always check the rear view mirror. And remember, it's not a hit and run if you drive away slowly. All right? (laughs) You know, it's also like, normally when you're giving a speech, especially about resigning or being fired, like, surely you want to make people regret it. Like, when you give the speech, you want people to go like, oh, oh, man, have we made the wrong choice? They're leaving. Like, remember with Obama, right? When he gave his farewell speech, even racists in America were like, maybe he was one of the good ones. (laughs) But this guy, 
This guy gives a speech, he's like, yo, how did he get the job? How, like, did he win a contest or something? How, who is this person? 